Uh, let's take a look at uh, getting started using the router cam feature in uh, router CAD. Uh, under the menu options you'll see nesting. We'll select nesting and then we'll select nest and this will open up the uh, nesting portion of the program but uh, under this you'll see router cam select router cam g-code main will take you into the g-code uh, production uh, page we'll, we'll bypass that for right now let's go to machine setup this is where you define your variables for your machine setup as far as the way it likes to work uh, this is just a generic router cam CAD solo machine. This is just one we provide. This is basically an MNG code machine based on the uh, WinCNC controller. The trim amount on X and Y is the space we leave from the edge of the sheet to allow the sheets to be squared or the pieces to be squared to the sheet. The safe Z is the amount that the machine will travel above the, the Z plane when it's uh, going to make tool changes. Maximum Z minus is the maximum amount that we'll cut in a Z minus direction. So that's 0 0.05. This is just a safety block so that if you put in a cut that's way deeper than it's supposed to be, this will be the maximum Z, Z minus value that we'll create. This is the lift. We do this is set for like an eighth inch lift. This means the machine will lift up just an extra eighth of an inch before it uh, goes into the part. So it just doesn't come over and just dive into the part. Uh, these are just your preferences on your drill path where you want horizontal or vertical, uh, route path horizontal or vertical, what type of route entry you want. And all three of these options are really based on the type of machine you have and we'll help you set that up. Those are some of the questions we, we answer. Uh, and it should, then also it's user preference, you know, how you want the machine to, to, to run. Uh, on the arc segments, uh, machines work off radiuses and also uh, or radii, I guess I should say, and also uh, center I and J. This one's set up for I and J calls, uh, and then are they absolute or relative to the part? Most of the time they're going to be relative. Our offset here is top of the spool board. That means that Z0 will be top of the spool board, uh, the uh, top of the part, uh, if we select that one. And then these are just options, you know, decimal feed rates or uh, reduce feed rates, uh, convert inches to millimeters if you're using like a European machine that's set up to uh, run in millimeters we can let you design inches and machine in millimeters. Uh, these are just preferences here as far as your line numbers. You also have the uh, tool changer and inside this option it's where you set up your tools. This is your tool positions on this particular machine. Uh, I have 13 tools set up and so tools like here, I will click new and create a, a new tool and then a tool, you put your diameter in here uh, height is usually just the cutter length of the cutter uh, and then that can be an end mill, a drill, a ball end top bit or a V bit or a shape bit and as you define this you just select the save uh, data button and that will save it to the uh, database and then once the tools are defined here, they'll appear in the list over here. And you can select them from the drop down, put them in the correct location. And again, these are just different settings for different machines. And we, the best part of what we do is tell you what machines require what setups. Uh, and we also have the post that you can just download for different machines. Uh, we're going to just save the data there and exit. Uh, and if your machine comes with a drill bank, uh, this is where you come in and configure your drill bank. You know, what type of drill bank do you have? What are the setups? And uh, all these, and again, this can be a little bit overwhelming, but we provide you this information depending on what your manufacturer wants and how they want to run that. We don't expect you to know all this starting out with a new machine. But this does give you the ability, like the entire program, that as you understand the machine more fully and understand your what you want to do, you have total control of uh, of how this works or how to make any changes that we do. You have this access to the same tools we have. I'm going to uh, close this. Uh, if you come into uh, tool strategies, the only thing we haven't covered, uh, this is where you de determine how you want the machine to cut. You know, by the way it appears in the list here, so I have like the shape layer it's a metal outside, it's going to use a 3H compression spiral 
the layer that's going to cause it to kick in is the shape layer. So when the program sees the shape layer on a part, it's going to come in and add two hundredths to the depth of the part. If you don't draw any parts with thickness, it's going to assume the parts three quarters of an inch, and those are values that you put in. Uh, here's our plunge rate, our feed rate, our spindle speed. Uh, this is our lead in. That's how much of a line is going to make leading into the part to start the cut. The lead out is how much it's going to lead out. And our overlap is one inch. Usually I try to make it uh, about twice the length uh, of the diameter of the cutter. This is only a three eighths cutter, so I could probably make those three quarters or even five eighths and probably be just fine. But the def I just put the default in it as an inch. So if we look at a uh, different tool like an island cut, See, this, this tool strategy is called an island. It's going to be a dado. It's going to use a quarter inch down shear. The layer name that's going to cause it to kick in is quarter inch island. Uh, all my uh, preferences. And then by the way they appear in the list here, when you define where they appear in the list, like I have the uh, quarter inch island coming in as a dado. So when it sees this, it's going to do the island after it does all the boring. And then also on the, when we started this, if you look at the shape layer, it's going to be one of the very last things done because that's when it's coming in cutting out the big parts. And the last thing you want to do with the machine is usually cut the parts free from the other parts. So that's some of the logic involved, just kind of a quick overview of how you uh, get started with uh, router cam. Uh, thank you very much for your time.